The fact that you have to play this game on a controller is dog ass. It's dog water. It's doo-doo butter. It's not good if Nintendo would just get their fucking heads out of their asses and decide to make more money because they would if they did and just ported Pokemon Unite to PC and allowed people to play it with keyboard and mouse, the game would pop the fuck off. We have Video Game Donkey, the dunkster, the best to ever do it. Donkey's best of 2021, assumedly of video games, because that's typically what Donkey is covering, but also could be, you know, best of when it comes to, I don't know, politicians. It could be best of for like new restaurants. It could be sex, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. So let's let's see what's up. I don't know. Donkey's always willing to surprise. 2021 was Bullshit. The only game was Spongebob. We are really feeling the effects of COVID on the game industry now. I think efficiency is destroyed, morale is crushed, games that would have been great were good, and games that would have been good were bad. Back for Blood was supposed to be Left 4 Dead 3, but really it was more like Saints Row 1. Really? Whereas the best part of the game is Spawn killing each other in the pre-game lab. Deathloop had funny kicking, but I got a couple Kick more loops loop. out of Loop Hero where you horse- Loop Hero was fucking sick. That's one game that has been referenced that I have actually played. It's a very cool game. I think this is a very good game. Pokemon Unite made League of Legends look like a masterpiece. This was also a really good game, but the unfortunate part about Pokemon Unite is that because of Nintendo's hubris, they, Nintendo lives in this weird paradox where they simultaneously try to go out of their way to innovate more than most other game companies. So for instance, like PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, 4, 5, Xbox 360, Xbox One, et cetera, et cetera. They're not really taking too many risks. They're literally just updating hardware and stuff like that. Whereas Nintendo was like, ooh, well, we started off making the NES. Let's now go from 2D into 3D platform with the Nintendo 64. Let's also produce handhelds and then innovate on the handhelds. And then now we've got the GameCube. What's next? Let's do motion controls where you got some fucking dildos in your hand that you move the shit around with, and then we move on to the Wii U, where we give you a literal tablet, but also a computer or TV screen that you're gonna play on, and you also get a little stylus. And then we also will give you the Switch, where it's a mobile device, but it's also, you could play it on your TV too, and it's, it's got the Joy-Cons, and it, like, they try really hard to innovate on their hardware and the experience that you would have given that hardware into the games that they make. But when it comes to the actual games that they make, they are very rarely innovating at all. They just make the same thing over and over. And not only that, when they do deviate from the norm, when they have smaller studios help them deviate from the norm, the more recent example is going to be Pokemon Arc Ass, uh, which is a, a deviation from the standard Pokemon archetype. It's a cool idea, and from what I've seen of it, it seems like it's pretty neat. Pokemon Unite is neat because it's got a cool IP that I appreciate because Pokemon for me has nostalgic value and just the characters in general are kind of cool. But also, it's a MOBA, and you can play the Pokemons, and it's competitive. Nintendo doesn't really do a lot when it comes to competitive video gaming outside of Smash Ultimate and stuff like that. The big problem with Pokemon Unite is that the actual game itself, and the fact that it's like a deviation from the norm for the Pokemon IP especially, and just for games in general that Nintendo would produce, or work with other studios to produce, is that it's got a fucking 8 billion ton chain strapped to its leg that it's almost impossible to overcome and that chain is literally this shit that chain is the fact that you have to play on this shit you gotta play on a joy con or you gotta play on a switch pro controller both of which not that much of an improvement going from Joy-Con to Switch Pro Controller because MOBAs are not meant to be played on a controller. The fact that you have to play this game on a controller is dog ass. It's dog water. It's doo-doo butter. It's not good if Nintendo would just get their fucking heads out of their asses and decide to make more money because they would if they did and just ported Pokemon Unite to PC and allowed people to play it with keyboard and mouse, the game would pop the fuck off. The game's dead right now, I'm pretty sure. People are probably still playing it. I haven't heard shit about it until literally this donkey video. I'm pretty sure it's not, like, the hype has died. I don't know how many people are actually following the game. I don't know if there's much of a competitive scene or anything like that, and obviously Nintendo hates their competitive scenes. So, like, if the game was ported to PC, you would unlock the game for a variety of people that are not gonna spend a billion dollars on a Switch, just to play this easily free-to-play video game, and you'll have better hardware, which will unlock it, unshackle it from its handicap, from its chains, and you could actually produce a very fun competitive game that's not super complex, 
It's simpler than League of Legends and Dota, and you can have fun with it with a familiar IP that people like, and it'd be so sick, and they'd make so much money. They would make boatloads of money, but they won't do it because they've got brain disease. I don't know what it is. They've got worms. It's very annoying. Anyway, I would still be playing this game. I played it for a while when it first came out. I would probably still be playing it if it was on the PC and I could play with keyboard and mouse, but I can't get past the fact that I have to literally aim skill shots with a fucking joystick. Ridiculous. Our stove came up with a battle chest so good it should be on the battle chest. Prop Night is a terribly designed game, but it's kind of funny. SpongeBob added Garfield, but you can't play as him on Monday. Call of Duty's 40 player matches felt like 700 players, and Battlefield's 130 player matches felt like 7 players. The two best games that aren't on my list this year are Deltarune and Halo Infinite. They're both free, they're both a lot of fun, but they both said to me, come back in 10 years. When these games are finished, I haven't played then I'll put them on the list. Also, I haven't played Undertale, and I won't. How about that? I don't care. You could say it's like, oh, it's such a pivotal moment in video gaming. It's such a cool and innovative concept. And it was made by one person and the OST is ill nasty. Like, I don't care. I'm not going to play it. Get rolled. Number 14. Way Okay, Ratchet and Clank. This was a lot like a modern Pixar movie where while it's happening, it's a lot of fun. But the second it's over, you forget it happened. Go out and touch some fucking grass. This review was awful. Enough said. That's a comment from my Ratchet and Clank review. We watched by that. By Vincent Rivet. Oh, no, wait, no. I watched that when Hassan watched it. Because Hassan also played it. Rivet is the girl Lombax they invented for this. And I, and I know, okay, so some people are going to talk shit if this becomes like a YouTube video especially. So, like, my big problem is the fact that I don't play a lot of games is, first of all, I don't play video games. I'm not a gamer. I don't think I qualify as a gamer. To me... The definition of a gamer is somebody that is regularly playing video games, that is regularly looking forward to new video game releases, that is very embroiled in like the, the ecosystem of different games that are coming out, different genres, trying a bunch of different stuff, playing consistently. I play a single video game. I speed run Super Mario 64 for the 120 star category, and that's all I do. I don't play any other games, and if I do, it's some dumb shit like Babble Royale, which is a Scrabble Battle Royale on occasion randomly like i'm not a gamer but i am a speedrunner. but so the big problem for me and video games is that i've been playing games for so long i used to be a gamer i used to be playing all kinds of different games i used to be going all over the place trying different genres doing different shit kind of getting excited for new video games this is not the same for me anymore and i think the endorphin receptors that are targeted for video gaming have just been grounded to a fucking pulp as a result of the fact that I have just played games for so long to the point where the only way I can feel anything in a video game is if there's some kind of competitive element or a skill I can develop or both usually because those things happen to coincide when it comes to video games. So for instance, after a certain point, the only games I was playing were things like League of Legends or CSGO or PUBG or Warzone or whatever else or Rocket League I've dumped a lot of time into and I really enjoy things like that I enjoy games that allow me to develop a skill get better at the mechanics of the game understand the mechanics of a game and don't necessarily have a storyline don't have an end point they're just a consistent skill that I can get better at and you know compete against other people with that's what I enjoy and Super Mario 64 speedrunning fits the bill the mechanics of the game are very nice and good and fun which is why it's the best speed game available and I can simultaneously develop a skill get better at the game and I can do it in a competitive sense in that I compete against myself to beat my own times and get better but also compete against other people on the leaderboard once I start doing full runs on my twitch stream twitch.tv slash CC, which is where I'm currently reacting to this right now live in front of your eyes. But I don't, it, that's just my problem. That's not a condemnation of video games today. That when I say like I don't play video games or I'm not a gamer, I'm not saying, oh, games nowadays are dog shit. They're poopy butt cheeks. They're lame. They're not fun. They're badly designed. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's a me problem. This is a condemnation of the self. That's the issue. There are probably things that I could have done or can still do to actually be able to enjoy story-based games. For instance, the most recent story-based game that I actually was excited for and enjoyed playing was Subnautica Below Zero. And before that, obviously, the first Subnautica. But the only reason why that is is because it ticked so many boxes for my niche interests. 
I really enjoy marine life. I like the ocean. I like ocean worlds. I like fantastical ocean worlds or alien ocean worlds. I like exploration. I like the spooky nature of the terror-inducing elements of the game. And more importantly, I really fucking like Leviathan-type creatures. And as an extension of that, like massive land masses, like mountains and stuff like that. But specifically Leviathan creatures, which, you know, spoiler alert, Subnautica has some of them. Uh, so because of that, and the fact that it just still happens to have a story, if it didn't have a story, if it was more like Minecraft, uh, well, I guess Minecraft has a story now, but if it didn't have a story, I would probably still play it. But anyway, that's my spiel. That's why I'm not much of a gamer, and I don't expect that to change anytime soon. Anyway. Scheme. For Monster Hunter Rise, they put in a grapple hook. So speaking and of... So next up, people be like, oh my god, if you like Leviathan creatures, why don't you play Monster Hunter Rise? First of all, I like Leviathan creatures in the water, in the air, and to a lesser extent in space, in that order. When it comes to terrestrial Leviathans or Colossus, it's just not as exciting to me because like it's on the ground and like I exist on the ground. So like it's meh. the idea of like, I'm never in the ocean. I'm never in the deep ocean. I'm never in the air. I'm never in space. It's more interesting to me, the kind of creatures that could be in those environments. And in addition to that, when I see these big creatures, when I see these Leviathan type creatures, even in Monster Hunter, my first instinct is not, wow, I really want to fucking end that thing's life. That's not how I interpret these kind of creatures. My first instinct is like, holy shit, that thing is really cool. I wonder how it lives. What does it eat? How does its biology work? How does it reproduce? How does it like battle for territory? Is it carnivorous? Is it omnivorous? I like all of these other really interesting stuff about the creatures themselves. And the fact that Monster Hunter, well, I don't think it's exclusively about killing the big creatures. It's kind of also exclusively about killing the big creatures. And that just does not sit right with me. I don't like that. Which is why I really enjoy um, Subnautica because you can't, spoiler alert, kill the creatures. You have to avoid them or, you know, exploit them for resources or whatever else. But anyway, that's another caveat, which will be like the next one. And then other people will say, what about Shadow of the Colossus? Apparently that's a fucking based game, uh, but I've never played it and I don't think I ever will. But apparently the way that Shadow of the Colossus has you as the player interact with the Colossus in the game is apparently like with a lot more respect in the way that I was just describing. But you also, spoiler alert, have to kill him for whatever story based reason. Anyway. They put in a grapple hook and a doggy. Paul. Many motorways should draw little roads so the car can go to their job and go beep beep traffic. This is cute. Highway to go over the roundabout. Oh shit, you dad. I played a lot of Metroid. Wait, what was that? Many motorways. Many motorways. That sounds cute. I played a lot of Metroids this year because I'm one of the realest gamers of all time. Metroid Dread was like third place or buttony smooth controls fun power-ups beautiful environments and some of the most intense boss fights in the history of the some series big boy. but it also makes a lot of the same mistakes that samus returns did and the robots are a fucking dickhead marlo's golf let's go is mechanically identical to hot shots golf for the ps1 but with online multiplayer golf is the no perfect way. game for nintendo netcode because it doesn't require <laughs> good netcode at all true you can be wiggler golfing on new donk city okay it's not a very ambitious game but it's a lot of fun holy shit what a god game 2d beat-em-ups are dead the last 2D beat em up to come out was Castle Crashers. That game is 13 years old. Streets of Dude, Alien Hominid was also based. I don't know how many zoomers we have here. This game was so sick. This game is still worth a play nowadays. It's essentially like the, the precursor to Castle Crashers. In fact, the same studio might. Yeah, Behemoth, I think, was the same studio for Castle Crashers. I think. Tom Fulp, Dan Paladin, yep, Behemoth, yep, same studio. Such a good game. I like this game not only for the gameplay, it's like a side-scroller, bullet hell, shoot 'em up but also it had what was called PDA games, where you, here, it's on the back here, a little mini game thing, where you just, it's like a platformer. But the cool thing about it is not only was there levels that were pre-made, there were also, as is suggested on the box art, a level editor. I love video games that give me the ability to create my own levels and experiences within the game. That shit is so cool to me. I love that shit. It's so cool too. It's just a stinky little platformer and you can just make your own levels. It's very neat. I kind of want to play it again. Rage 4 is out here acting like the competition is still fierce. Wall bouncing dudes off the edge of the screen, racking up hundred hit combos to funky 
DS electronic music egging you out. So many enemies, so many playable characters. You can throw weapons at people and they'll bounce back into your hand. You can play as a kangaroo. No. Psychonauts 2 has been in the like for so long I think nuts. people forgot that they funded it. It's not as polished ah. or snappy as Ratchet & Clank, but it tells a smarter, more creative story. A story about minds that engages the mind and gets Five in your head. There's a dentist level, there's a Disneyland level, there's a Shenmue level of questions being asked. What are you doing out here? Can I ask you about your family? Can everyone in the pool family talk to animals? What can you tell me about Compton Pool? Are you worried about Maligula? I have some questions about pancakes. Why didn't you just go order some pancakes at the cafeteria? What's What's that booty do? Your recipe. He didn't say what that. sort of substitutions? Can I have a pancake? Where'd you learn how to make pancakes? Prison. I did not know what character he was talking to. Eagle. Hey, hey. Game is dumb never as shit. Again. A big booby lady oh! chases you around a castle. There's a fish man and an evil puppet and a fat. I think the monster design in this game is cool. I didn't play it, obviously, but I saw some of it. Tells you landmines to go fishing. Finger. It's not the scariest Resident Evil until it decides to be oh! the scariest Resident Evil ever. Daddy. What a fucking pussy. Fuck. Death Stranding, there is nobody more outspoken about their <laughs> hatred of Death Stranding than me. But at the same time, there is also nobody who has played Death Stranding more than me. What a me. silly game. Inscription? Ooh, this game so this seems spooky, neat. I have not played it. This is closer to a game I might actually consider playing, just because I like deck building card games, specifically limited format, which this seems to be because it's more of like a roguelike. Game that you play in a dark cabin with a serial killer. On top of being a fun card game, it's also an escape room game, and then on top of that, I'm not even gonna say Also, the artist. Just cool. know that this game gets crazy. Guilty Gear Strive. Oh shit, was the Weeb Fighter, let's go. I threw a lot, a lot Code of there. If I didn't touch this game for 10 years, I could probably pick up a controller and start pulling out May combos from muscle memory. Guilty so what's funny about this is that in addition to, ooh, you like Leviathan creatures, what about Monster Hunter? Another thing I hear a lot when I talk about how I can only enjoy games nowadays if there's a skill I can develop or competitive stuff, he'll be like, oh, well, what about MOBAs? I don't really play MOBAs. I don't care to play MOBAs again. What about FPS? I've got Keratoconus, which progressively makes my eyesight deteriorate, and it's a genetic condition that I had no control over that will eventually make me go blind and I have to pay 10k to fucking fix it. Uh, and my insurance, unfortunately, doesn't cover it because I get it through defunded government healthcare. Regardless, can't play FPS either though I do kind of enjoy them I've just always been kind of bad at them and now my eyesight's worse so next people will be like okay Conure with all of your preconditions what about fighting games and the answer to that is the heavy input based Konami code a b x y z x b half circle turn quarter turn to do a single move kind of shit while I appreciate and have respect for in the mechanical skill required to play these games effectively especially at a high level just doesn't really fit with my bimbo tiny brain. So I prefer fighters that are more percentage-based platform fighters like Smash Ultimate, a baby game for my baby brain. The problem with that is that one net code for Smash Ultimate is bad. Two, it's too many matchups and I can't care to learn them all. Three, I just don't have that kind of time anymore. So apparently Guilty Gear Strive is a bit simpler when it comes to the traditional fighting game input based memes. And the art style is cool as well, because I mean, who doesn't like the weeb aesthetic? But I'll probably never play it. That being said, apparently the Riot Fighter is supposed to be closer in input to Smash. So that's kind of neat. And if it's free to play, which it might be, or if it's cheap, I might give it a shot. But fighting games in me, they just don't go too well together. I get um, really mad. <laughs> I think it's because fighting games are, you know, surprise, surprise, a very physical experience, not only in the game itself and the gameplay, because you're fighting other people in the game, but also it's like a very physically engaging gameplay experience in that like the way that you do the inputs is pretty physical, like it's very mechanically taxing on your hands. You have to focus a lot to play it at a high level and to try to get better. It's very easy to get very, very engaged emotionally and even physically in a fighting game. And I am not immune to these things either. And I don't get like physically angry. I used to as a kid, I used to throw controllers and shit, but now I don't. The most I do will get like very mean verbally. <laughs> 
The repressed ableism that I used to traffic in when I was younger and dumber seems to tiptoe to the edge of my tongue when I play these games and people are doing some crazy shit on the other side of the screen. And I just don't like feeling that way. So fighting games in me, I just kind of stay away from them. <laughs> it's just that the skill ceiling is very high and the, the barrier for entry when it comes to wanting to play on like a competitive ladder is also, I think, pretty high a lot of the time. Mostly because of the mechanical skill necessary to play efficiently. When Shipman 1 came out, that Shit game man. had one level. When Shipman 2 came out, that game had two levels. When Shipman 3 levels, but by combining all three Hitmans, now you have 21 levels. Nice. Talking to you, sir. You talking to me? Step into this. Step into my office. <laughs> the maps are monstrous in scope, but also meticulously detailed. Spaghetti, 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 Let's go. Hey, in Mario, Paisan. you need a hundred coins to get an extra life, right? But in Hitman, you only need one coin to kill a hundred people. Yeah, I snuck a peek, so shoot me. All right. I'm about to hit you guys Let's with go. one of the biggest Bro. The biggest problem with Nintendo, I thought that I was on the money previously when I was talking about the problems with Nintendo. The biggest problem is that they don't focus enough on their Mario RPGs, okay? That is the actual real issue. The original Paper Mario, fucking sick. The Mario and Luigi games for Game Boy Advance, wicked sick. Like, there's so much, I've not played the original Super Mario RPG. There is so much potential in the RPG format for Mario that I enjoy a lot, because I played the original Paper Mario for uh, Nintendo 64 as a kid. Have not played much A Thousand Year Door, because I didn't have it, though I did see it played at cousins' houses and stuff like that, and apparently people enjoy it, and people that have played both seem to enjoy A Thousand Year Door more. Uh, so that's cool. It's a really good idea. The Mario and Luigi series especially is super slept on. Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. This shit was so good. You play as both Mario and Luigi and you do crazy shit and it's fun and it's cute. Look at this art style. It's adorable. Why do we not have more of this? Why? Alpha Dream went bankrupt, which was responsible for the Mario and Luigi series. I'm pissed. I, I lay the blame squarely, squarely on Nintendo for that, not Alpha Dream. I don't know anything about Alpha Dream. I guarantee it was Nintendo's fault. Look, you could, you play, you, you would team up moves and stuff. You kill innocent creatures that are doing nothing but existing and you get loot. It's very good. My twist of all time. When I was a little kid, my favorite type of game was RPGs, because those were the only Yikes. games easy enough for me to actually beat. Ah. Dragon's Quest XI is a game that takes me back in time. Back to a time when RPGs weren't embarrassing cash grabs for weirdos. Ah. It doesn't have aloof fashion models or mind-melting meta-commentary or convoluted combat. Is this the one that has... Oh no, this is Xenoblade Chronicles. This is not Final Fantasy. I was thinking about the uh, the femboy cloud from the new Final Fantasy or some shit. I don't know. But People that's because Dragon Quest delivers where it oh, actually Oh, this is Dragon counts. Quest. Never mind. It's not Fun storylines and Whatever. goofy characters. It's all the same. Listen, the only thing I know about Dragon Quest, Xenoblade Chronicles, and Final Fantasy, and Kingdom Hearts is that they all, for some reason, have to include literally all of their sword characters in Smash. And there's just so many sorties in Smash, and I'm pissed. Because sorties are boring, they're boring to play, they're boring to play against, there is not a lot of room for differences in skill set, there's so much copy-pasting, and I'm mad about it. Boring to watch as a spectator, too. The only good sorties that have ever existed are in Smash Melee, and that's specifically in regards to competitive Smash Melee, okay? Like, watching a really good Marth in Melee is absurd. That's really cool. In Ultimate, I don't know about that one. 3D platformers are back. Ukulele, Fall Guys, Sackboy, Hat in Time, Splash 4, Astro by Fresh and Frank, Psychonauts, they're making the 3D Kirby, they're doing the open world Sonic. But there was one platformer this year that stood above all others. I'm talking about Milan Wonder. Let's go. Course, dancing section. But really, I'm talking about It Takes Two. <laughs> this game seemed neat. <laughs> I watched <laughs> Simply and <laughs> Cheese play this. I cannot believe that the funny guy from Game Awards actually made a game this good. This is gonna be awesome. <laughs> Me and Leah had so much fun playing this game, we were just continually floored by how much different stuff this game had. The only thing that was weird is that this character is really odd. I don't know about this character. The rest of the game seems really cool, but in watching Simply and Cheese, 120 star uh, SM64 runners, for those of you who don't know. I, this character just rubbed me the wrong way, but maybe that was the point. I have a very simple method for picking the best game of any year. And that method is, if a 3D Mario game came out that year, 
that was the best game. Ha! Bowser's Fury is not only the best game of 2021, but it comes with the best game of 2013. The Mario motherfuckers have done it again. This is a team that cannot be touched or seen because they operate on a different planet than us. Comparing I did not know this game existed. I'm not gonna lie. The fact that I speedrun Super Mario 64 entails a lot of people asking about like, oh, well, what about Super Mario Sunshine? What about Super Mario Odyssey? You know, all this kind of what about other 3D Mario platformers? And my response to this is that Super Mario 64 is the best one. However, I have watched a lot of Super Mario Sunshine speedruns. I've obviously played the game as a kid and I beat it, but I've watched a lot of Super Mario 64 speedruns and the game is actually really cool for the speedrun, but I'm never going to play it myself in the speedrun format. And also Super Mario Odyssey seems to fit the same bill in that even as a casual playthrough, a lot of people will say it's about as good or maybe even better than Sunshine. But in the way that I would interpret like any kind of interest in that game would be through the speedrun. And apparently the, the Hattie mechanics and stuff like that actually do make the mechanics in that game really cool too so that's neat um galaxy games are interesting i never had a wii so i could only play them at my cousin's house because they had a wii that was neat but the problem with that is that you have to play with a wii mote more or less i'm sure there are other methods where you don't have to but it seems like the people who speed run the game have to play with a wii mote and then you get rsi very easily repetitive strain injury or whatever the hell apparently it's very taxing on your hands there's an odyssey d make i did not know this um i mean i will so it's it's a bit sacrilegious to say but as a super mario 64 speed runner i don't actually expect that i'll ever play odyssey mostly because i just don't play games casually for fun anymore that's just not a thing i do anymore that could change into the future but currently and for the last several years that's just kind of how i interact with games and even then nowadays i barely have any fucking time to myself it feels like i just don't have a lot of time it feels like to play games like that because like if i'm gonna play a game off stream i'm just gonna be practicing mario like there's no reason for me to do anything else so i probably won't play odyssey even if it's a really good casual experience um, and i probably won't speed run it either but it seems pretty good that's neat. Mario to other video games is like comparing me to a fucking content creator. Bowser's ah. Fury is a real ass video game in an age of fake ass gamers. But That's me. Mario I'm a real. just a little bit better. Mario 2 is actually pretty sick. Apparently, Super Mario Bros. 2 was not supposed to be Super Mario Bros. IP. It was supposed to be some other IP that literally nobody's ever heard of. And then Nintendo just commandeered it. Not like commandeered it. They ended up taking over the project through a mutual agreement, I assume, and just replaced the assets with Mario assets. So that's why the game is such a departure from the other installments of the Super Mario Bros. series. But in that way, I think it's actually really cool. It's a really interesting game. It's kind of a fever dream almost, which is an appreciable factor in my opinion. But Super Mario Bros. 3 is the best one of the early 2D Mario platformers. I first played Super Mario Bros., because I had a Nintendo Entertainment System, and I had the Super Mario Bros. and Duck Hunt dual cartridge, and also the shooter. Um, that was a good game. Anyway, well, I had a lot more to say about this video than I thought I would. Holy shit. This video is kind of called it is actually something quite special. Today, for the first time and hopefully the only time, we have a dual Conyer callout, because I'm a fucking dumbass. I forgot to do the last Connor call out. You'll notice that in the Alpha Trans video, it's missing at the end. So I figured to catch up, we do both for this one. Wow, so crazy. Without further ado, this video's Connor call out is simultaneously in a completely unscripted and unprecedented series of events. Dave Dreadful and Trad Dad, both of them are here through the power of post editing. Let's go. Congratulations to you both. Best of luck forming the alliance that will inevitably bring me down, as I'm sure you'll collaborate in the future to make this happen again. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying anyway. If you'd like to be the next Connor Call It All, you gotta do is follow me on Twitter, at ConnorCC, you retweet my video links when they go live, same as the, it's the same process every time. Do it! Okay? Remember to leave a like if you'd like, comment your favorite video game down below, subscribe, hit the bell as well, do everything that I tell you to do because, listen, I know what I'm talking about, obviously you don't, I am the creator of the content you watch, you are simply the viewer. So I've got the best intentions, obviously. Do it, breathe it, live it, whatever, have a good day.